Welcome back to the shipyard and another top 10 list. Today, we're talking about tech. At first, I thought this was going to be a really easy list, and kind of grouping things into the top was easy, but then figuring out the rest of this was trickier than I thought. I bounced a bunch of things around for my number 10 slot, and oh, I, I had to make some hard cuts. So with number 10, I ended up going with Ion Thrusters. This is a card that I've seen played a fair amount recently, and it's always been a card that's intrigued me because it changes what you actually reveal on your dial. It turns a 3 into a 4. It turns a 4 into a 5. So you can use things like Quantum Slipstream Drive. You, you can use Picard Maneuver. All these cards that are based upon revealing a certain speed maneuver. If you don't have it, with Ion Thrusters, now you do. Uh, it, it makes Deep Space Nine go faster. And that's crazy to me. That's all really interesting. And uh, that, that's why it's on my list at number 10. Number nine is EM Pulse, specifically the Ferengi version. I don't particularly care for the other EM Pulses, but the Ferengi one is a really good card. Uh, for an action, you get to target a ship, give them an ox power, and make them roll two less attack dice. Yeah, it's restricted. You, you can't target a ship that's in your forward firing arc. But for the most part, it's not hard to pull off. Yeah, you just have to fly a little differently. This is one of those tech that when it goes right, it really does go right. Number eight is Unimatrix Shielding. And that is because it gives me extra durability and it really saves me from one of the biggest Borg threats out there in Magnetometric Guided Charge. It doesn't do everything, but it effectively reduces the damage I'm taking long term by two. It also is just a good card for soaking damage against any Borg ship, whether that be the Sphere, the Tactical Cube, the Oversized Cube, the Octahedron, or any of the Assimilated Vessels. So, uh, Unimatrix Shielding, a good tech, one that has a ton of uses, and what it does for the Equinox, just adding shields so that I can keep regenerating them and uh, keep that whole thing going and have all the durability I want, really good. Number seven is Shroud. I like Shroud because I get more uses out of my Dominion crew, and a lot of the cards are really good, but they're discards. I'm looking at Ramada Klon specifically. Uh, he is a very good Jem'Hadar effect, but only getting one use stings. But when I can get one more use, that's really good. Also, sticking Shroud on a ship that I'm using Conditional Surrender on, then I still get to keep my crew after I have an attack negation. That's really good. And if nothing else, it's a one-point filler card so that I don't get underbuilt. That is an often underlooked aspect of this game. So Shroud, super valuable uh, and super flexible in how it gets used. Number six is Enhanced Hull Plating. This for me is one that I really like being able to just say, eh, I'm going to cancel some damage. And there are builds you can set up to just ignore the damage. I really like what Enhanced Hull Plating does, whether it be free on the NX or setting it up on uh, Kirk's Enterprise where you still get an action even when you have Ox Power so that you can use Enhanced Hull Plating, take an Evade, for instance, stack on some things that give you extra defense dice, and you're doing all right. It may not be perfect, but... In my world, it's a good card, and 
it still works, even if you don't get defense dice. So your Nanclis, your Meg Charge rolls, you still have a means of defense. And those cards are getting more and more play, so uh, having a means of defending against them is a valuable tool in your arsenal. Number five is Cargo Hold. Now, I understand this goes on one ship class in the game, and that's the Ferengi Shuttle. I talked about how valuable Quark's treasure is in my top ships list. Cargo Hold is the reason why that ship is so valuable, especially as the generic ship. Cargo Hold is one point for two slots, crew or tech, and you get more stuff. Yes, you're limited in the total points you can spend on the upgrades that you put into the cargo hold slots, but anytime you're adding a slot for one point, you can even convert one tech into two crew slots. It's so valuable. This is one of those cards that don't know that everyone's truly wrapped their head around, but when you see people build Quark's treasure builds, you kind of just go, wait, you can fit all of that on that ship? Cargo Hold's the reason for it. And it's scary. Cargo Hold is the enabler. It's worth being a top tech because of it. Number four is improved deflector screens. And maybe I'm overrating it a little bit, but I see enough improved deflector screens. And I've run enough improved deflector screens to know how valuable putting it on a ship and how frustrating it can be to actually kill a ship when every single time you attack them, they go, mm, that crit, no, that doesn't count. It's every defense. They say one of those hits or crits, get rid of it. Every single time. It doesn't matter how much you do, you're always doing one less. When you can frustrate your opponent, you are doing well. You are winning at the psychological game. Improved deflector screens helps you do that. So for that reason, it's a top tech in my book. Now, my top three can pretty much go in whatever order you want based on the build that you're trying to do. They all have their place. I went with my order kind of in a generic utility point of view. They're all really good. This is almost like 1, 1A, one and 1B, and there's no differentiation between A, B, and whatever. So number three is warp jump. Being able to just blink away is a super powerful effect, but it's not one warp jump that is scary. It's multiple warp jumps. It's being able to do this again and again and never allow your opponent the opportunity to shoot you. This is attack negation at the highest level. Yeah, I warp jump is great. It's repositioning. It's getting rid of ox power and combo it with enhanced hole plating. I could sit here for five minutes and talk about how good warp jump is, but I don't want to do that, so I'm not going to. Number two, and probably the upset here, is Cloaked Mines. They could legitimately be number one, and they probably are, but to me right now they're number two. Uh, cloaked Mines are area control, they are damage because they're on the board, and there's very little you can do about them other than deck codes. Sometimes you just have to fly right through them. Cloaked Mines specifically Romulan cloaked mines, but even Klingon cloaked mines are just not fun to deal with. They mess everything up. They change the flow of the game. I enjoy games of attack wing without cloaked mines much more than I enjoy games with cloaked mines. Though when I win a game of attack wing where I don't have cloaked mines and my opponent does, the victory is all that much sweeter, so take that for what it's worth. Uh, and my number one tech, which uh, if you're playing this game 
uh, you can probably deduce it's projected stasis field. The reason it wins out for me, you get to systematically target a ship, disable their shields, thus making them vulnerable to death, and prevent them from attacking. That is one of the best effects in the game. Uh, you are hurting their ability to live and you are hindering their ability to hurt you. So you are lowering your shields. You're rolling two less attack dice. So this card is not without its cost, but you got to pick and choose your moments. So for it being a super good card, you got to know when to play it. And as long as you can play it right, it will turn the game on its head. And that's why it's my number one card. Now, of course, you can sit here and argue that if you use projected stasis field, your opponent can then come back and warp jump. And you're absolutely right. So don't use projected stasis field on a ship that has warp jump, or even on a ship that has quark hiding a card, because it might be warp jump. So be smart about it. Just be smart. Pick your moments. It's all about picking moments. It's all about striking at the right time. Know what you're in for. So that wraps up tech. Some cards that were close. Thought Maker, Zindi Escape Pod, Quantum Slipstream Drive, Data Node. Data Node's a good card. Uh, and Cryogenic Stasis. That was kind of the next five. So, yeah, I, I'm probably missing a few good tech here. So... Funny bit, I am in editing at this point, and I realized I completely forgot Interface Generator, which I'm sure some of you were about to type a furious response about. Um, so Interface Generator slots in at number four, and thus everything else kicks down, and you can go from there. So the video won't reflect that, but the list in the description will. Sorry, I'm human, uh, but that's that. But tech's one of those things. Some people like it, some people don't, and that's that's that. So, um, yeah, guys, let me know what you think. I uh, I hope this has been somewhat enlightening. I hope you kind of like the new format of me talking more about cards rather than reading cards, because uh, that's what the card image is for. You can read yourself. Yeah, that's that. Thank you for watching, and until next time, we'll see you around the shipyard. Take care, guys.